And we're back. Okay, sorry about that. Usually Dota's fairly stable when I stream. It's kind of weird that it would go out like that. It's not the, uh... Not the first time that's ever happened. It has been happening a little bit more since the Dota Reborn beta and then the actual final upgrade to the Source 2 engine that happened uh, came out. It's been a little less stable and sort of the graphical upgrade has caused a couple of problems for my stream every now and then, but that's the first time in a while that, it's, that Dota's actually crashed. Um, anyway... Let's just jump right into these heroes. Um, so on my team, we've got Puck again, my little teleporting, damage dealing, sort of ranged hero. we got a Templar Assassin who can go invisible and bounce damage from her auto attack and uh, block damage with a shield and also do a bunch of bonus damage whenever she breaks her invisibility. Um, you've got a Lich who can give people frost armor, um, do damage in an AoE, uh, he can sacrifice creeps to gain some, some mana and health, and his ultimate ability is a giant ball of freezing stuff that bounces between heroes and creeps. Uh, we've got a bounty hunter who can go invisible. He's got a crit that will break, that will croc anytime he breaks his invisibility. He's got a shuriken that he can throw at people. And he's got a track ability which will reveal enemy heroes. We've got a wind runner, or wind ranger, sorry, who happens to be my favorite hero in the game. A uh, really versatile hero can be played as a carry or a support. I think she's going to get played as a carry this game. She's got her, her signature ability, Wind Run, which lets her uh, avoid damage and also run really fast. Uh, we've got a 3v1 happening up here over the top rune. Looks like she's going to get away. Meanwhile, the bottom rune, it's the uh, reverse. Uh, I think we might get away. Yeah. It's a 3v1, but we get the rune and we get away bottom, so that's fairly... Fairly well played on our part, on my team's part. We got both the runes there. Um, ooh, TA went boots first. I would, I, I don't, I don't recommend. Well, I guess if you're, mm, mm, I would, I would not, not recommend doing that, um, especially against the sniper, because um, you're gonna need more regen than that. Although, did she? Um, uh... Yeah, sorry about that. I was just sort of checking something on the career. I thought she'd already gotten her bottle, but no. Um... Yeah, that's, uh... That's kind of unfortunate. That I, I didn't realize that that's what she'd bought. Anyway. Um, I'm, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sort of still stunned, stunned by the, the build mid. It's been a while since I've seen a boots first on anybody. Um, like it gives you movement speed, which is really useful, and I guess you could make the argument that you, you don't need a ton of, of regen because, because on TA you've got, uh, You've got her first skill, Refraction, which does block a lot of damage, but, um, really, you want, you want some regen and some stats so that you're, you're hitting kind of harder. Yeah, because you, you saw how much harass she took there from the sniper. And that's 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 much worse for her than it is for him, because he can he can stand back and just regen up, while she has to get close to the creeps, to fight them. Although it does look like sniper went boots first also. That's uh, that's, that's a little frustrating to watch. Sorry. Um. 
So, did I talk about everybody on my team? Yeah, I talked about everyone on my team. We've got, on the enemy team, we've got uh, a Juggernaut again. We're seeing him again tonight, second time tonight. Uh, you know, like I said, he's kind of a pushing hero because he's got an ability that can heal himself. He's also got an ability that makes him immune to damage. Uh, immune to magical damage. He's got a really strong crit, and he's got his Omni Slash, which will let him pick off people if he finds them alone away from a creep wave. We've got a Bane, um, who's kind of an kind of an interesting hero, being played as a support this game. Um, usually, you know, you can kind of see her as both, but usually I see her as like a mid carry role. Um, at any rate, she's got um, she's got some of the some of the more interesting spells in the game. She's got Brain Sap, which basically lets her steal damage from an opponent. Um, not steal damage, I'm sorry, steal health. She she hits them and she heals herself with it. Um, she's got Nightmare, which is a disable. It's one, of the, it's one of the more interesting disables in the game because it's not really a stun. It's not really a slow. It, it locks somebody in place. They can't use spells or they can, and they can't use items um, while it's cast on them. But if anybody attacks them, then they're free and the Nightmare transfers to the person who attacks, who attacked them. So it's kind of a weird lockdown spell. It's more, it's more of a spell that you cast to keep somebody from running away so that you and all of your allies can set up next to them. And then one of you sort of takes one for the team, hits the person, gets, gets stuck in the nightmare, and then the rest of your team blows that person up. Um, it's also really mana expensive. It costs a lot of mana to, to cast, so it's kind of, kind of odd that she picks it up this early. Her first skill in Feeble basically casts it on somebody and they they do less damage because they miss their attacks. Um, they miss their attacks. And what else? Uh, actually, yeah, I guess maybe it doesn't make them miss. Oh, so two wards right next to each other. Uh, my ward is better. Because uh, you see, my ward catches the. Well, I guess there's catches the rune too. Um, but interestingly, mine uh, blocks this creep camp. That's kind of a, or I think it does. It might be a little too far. Actually, I think it's too far. I think it need, needed to be here. Um, anyway, blocking camps is a weird thing in Dota. Like, if if there are no creeps inside of a box around each creep camp. I think this one is like this, this big. Maybe it's like this big. Um, if there's no creeps in that area, then the game spawns creeps every minute in that camp. So what you can do is you can hit the creeps, get them to aggro on you, run away at exactly the right time, and if they're not in here when the minute ticks over from say 8 to 9 like it's about to now, or actually 5 to 6, sorry I'm blind, um, then it'll spawn more creeps in here and there'll be two sets of creeps in this camp. Um, the thing is though, the boxes are big enough that you can actually put wards in them so that even if they kill all these creeps, there won't be any creeps that spawn in there. Um, I was trying to do that with this ward. I think I missed. I think I needed to be like right here, like right inside this tree. Um, but it doesn't look like they're farming their jungle, so we'll probably never know. Um, so, well, he got a kill with that use of the ultimate, so I guess I can't criticize him for using it against Creep Wave. It did keep him alive, it did keep him from going on him, and it killed the Juggernaut. So that's, that's Lich's ultimate. That big ball of ice that was bouncing between all those creeps and the juggernaut and and the bane here, it does it does a ton of damage and it can do damage as long as it bounces. So a, a well timed lich alt can can wreck just about everybody. So that's me messing up my combo big time. What I should have done is as soon as I teleported in, I should have popped my waning rift. That would have totally caught the bane with a bunch of damage. It's uh 
It's a hundred damage at level one. That that would have been enough to secure that kill. So that was me messing up, and the lich had to come in and clean up my mess, and got the kill. Um, but the thing is, lich needs cheaper items than I need. Like I need to have a blink dagger to be really useful in the mid and late games, and well, see that time that was just a kill steal. He could have let me have that one. Because I need to finish my boots, and I need to get a blink dagger, otherwise I'm not going to be very good at initiating when I have my ultimate. Um, basically, like, if, if that doesn't make any sense to you, what I'm, what I'm... The thing about Puck, and the thing about her abilities is, in the early game, when everybody runs around slow, and nobody has blink daggers, and nobody has the ability to teleport away, she's strong because her, her illusory orb, the, this big ball of light that she throws out, um, it doesn't really matter as much that it's slow. It's bi it's big enough that as long as you're kind of fairly close to the enemy, they can't get out of the way of it when you cast it. But in the mid to late game, when everybody's bought boots and upgraded their boots and had and a lot of people have blink daggers and stuff, they can dodge this really easily. So she needs to have a blink so that she can sort of hide off to the side, jump in onto people, and then cast her ultimate ability dream coil so that they're all sort of trapped in a small space and then she can cast a loser orb on them and do a bunch of damage to them um, that's the way her combo sort of works ideally you blink in you tether them all to the ground so they can't run away you you waiting riff them and then you loser you loser orb them while they're all standing right next to each other and it it does a ton of damage if you can get it off correctly I don't think I ever got it off correctly in these games that I played with her. Um, just because I never... Um, in the, well, in the first game I had a Blink Dagger, um, but I didn't utilize it very well. And in this game, I'm not sure if I ever even got one. Um, oh, yeah. Let's see how TA's doing. Alright, so she's got Boots, and she's got Bottle, and she's got a Salve. Hmm. Yeah, I should not... Yeah, I got greedy there, I think. It took way too much damage. Um... Yeah, this TA was, was okay. Like, they were on voice chat and they were talking and they were actually kind of nice for a change. Um, it's always refreshing. Well, I shouldn't say refreshing, because people have been nice in Dota games to me about as often as they've been... Like super mean, like most people are just sort of neutral. Um, I just feel like people sort of remember their bad experiences in Dota and tend to talk about them a little more. Um, yeah, so that was I. That was actually I kind of tried to bait that out a little bit. Um, and that actually went pretty well. Probably I should have stayed. Like, well. I didn't know Lich was coming in with his ultimate up. Um, if I'd known that Lich was coming in with his ultimate up, I probably would have stayed and we might have killed... Might have killed the uh, sniper there. This guy. Yeah, we probably could have killed him. Oh, he only has... Oh, well, he's got a Shadow Blade in his stash, so he's going to pick that up. Um... Hmm... Yeah, so there's, you know, mistake there. There's a little bit of delayed reaction again. Um, Oh, that's not that's not a good place to be.
Huh. Okay, so I think TA just got juked there. I think she was trying to follow the Bane, and the Bane just sort of outplayed her a little bit. Um... Lich already has a mechanism. That's that's pretty good. This is one of the classic support items in Dota. Um, it's it's nice for supports to pick up because it can be built in a bunch of pieces. Um, so if you're you, so if you're constantly buying wards and stuff, you 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 buy one piece of the mechanism, you buy a bunch of wards. You buy the next piece of the mechanism, you buy another another set of wards. Uh, that's a pretty good kill there. Let's, let's take a look at some stats, huh? Uh, last hits denies. Uh, well, let's see. TA is well. Yep, the top two are on the enemy team. That's a problem. Um, also, way more denies on the enemy team. I only have six. That's kind of pathetic at 14 minutes. Actually, that's really bad. Okay, so I didn't farm very well this game. That's that's one thing we've discovered. And here we're sort of all grouped up as five. Um, okay, so this Wind Ranger hasn't learned w one of the tricks to playing Wind Ranger yet, which is um, when you're casting Shackle Shot on a on an enemy, you want to what you want to do is you cast it on on the uh, the ranged creep. Yeah, when we get a creep wave that's lined up, I'll sort of show you how it's how it usually works. Um, yeah, it's you cast it on this creep here, because the way that the way that her shackle shot works is you you cast it at something, um, and it's kind of weird. It's like in a line relative to where you're standing and they're standing, sort of, there's a sort of cone behind them where it has a chance to lat, where where it will latch onto either a tree or an enemy. If that makes sense. Like, if let's say she was to cast it on on the bounty hunter here. I know we're allies, but it kind of doesn't matter because he's sort of in the middle of this lane with no creeps around. Well, he's got creeps around him now, but he doesn't have them now. It's just a mini stun. It doesn't do much of a stun at all. But if, if she was to cast it, say, when he was sort of mixed in with all these creeps, it would latch on to one of the creeps, and then the stun would be much longer. Like, you saw it earlier when she shackled the Bane up here. It caught on one of these trees, and she couldn't move for a couple seconds. And the trick, like the trick that I'm talking about, okay, so there she got, she shackled the, um, the Wraith King to the Legion Commander. You saw it work there. But the trick to it is, if, if you can't see any enemy heroes behind the creep wave, except for, like, one. Like, if it's just if you're just 1v1, or you think you're just 1v1, what you do is you cast it on this range creep here, and then it'll latch to the hero behind them. Um, sort of a subtle trick. It's actually not that subtle, but it's a, it's a trick to playing as Wind Rager, and it, it's, sort of, it's sort of weird. Well, I mean, she, they could just be new. I have a feeling that these guys were a little bit new to Dota. So some of these mechanical stuff, me mechanical tricks, they haven't picked up yet. Um, there's mechanical tricks that I haven't picked up yet, like how to do my puck combo. But let's not talk about my mistakes, huh? Let's talk about my team's mistakes. It's all their fault, right? That's sarcasm, guys. It's not all their fault. It's not all anybody's fault. Looking at looking at the uh, last hits, it looks like it's my fault. Although I do have the second most denies on my team. Yeah, there we go. There's the bright side of this. I have the second most denies on my team. I have the the fourth fourth highest denies in the game.
So another kill off of a Lich ult. How much? God, he's he's farming really fast. Let's um. Uh, no, that's not what I wanted. I wanted kills death assists. All right. Um, how many kills? The Lich has the second most kills in the game with three. Wow. All right. So that the support Lich is doing some work. Um. All right. So I'm not. As as a player who plays support a lot, I'm not super happy with the uh, placement of these wards in, in the mid lane. Um, you could we could we could save save a sentry ward, put it right in the middle here, and it would it would cover most of the area. See, there's a shackle. Alright, so that was kind of TA, just getting a little bit greedy for a kill. Oh, I'm dead at this point. I was wondering where I was, and now I know. Alright, so she, she makes it back to base. So does Bounty. Uh, not, not sure what TA's doing there. Um, what was I saying about mechanism? Oh yeah, it, it does an AoE heal. Basically it'll heal Lich and any, any allied people creeps or heroes standing around him. It also gives a little bit of an armor buff whenever he casts it. Um, it's really good for pushing, it's really good for fighting, and it can be built in pieces, so it's, it's usually, it's often picked up by support heroes. Um, so let's see what other items we can talk about. Uh, TA still just has a bottle and boots. Kind of why you don't just go boots first. Um, The Wind Ranger's doing pretty good, although Armor Venom, I, not sure. Oh yeah, right, that's right. She she tries to build a Scotty, an Eye of Scotty, which is an item. Uh, it gives you a bunch of stats and it gives you a slow. It, it's a it's really commonly picked up on carries these days, um, but it's not great for Wind Ranger. Like, you go Ag Aghanim Scepter first on Wind Ranger. Also, the Null Talisman and the Ring of Basilius is a little bit of overkill with the uh, intelligence. Um, these are both, like, f for new, for early game items, these are fairly expensive. You can get away with one or the other, you don't need both. Um, the boots are good. Um, and it's okay that she's got the Ring of Basilius on because we are pushing here. Um, for me, boots, bottle, wand, you know, fairly basic starting items, but it's it's 20 minutes in, I should really have a blink by now. Oh, and Legion Commander just walks up behind me and kills me because I was looking at the tower. So what happened here is, I was looking here, and I didn't see this hero run up behind me until she'd already hit me like three times. So that was a major mistake on my part. And now all that work we did to push the lane up to their tower is going to be undone. They're going to just push it right back. <sighs> yeah, let's take a look at some graphs, huh? Oh, look at that graph. Ooh, yeah, yeah. So, this, I mean, it's tw it's 12 kills to 12 kills. Um, um, and they haven't taken that many towers. Um, 
But what has been happening is that the enemy team's uh, the enemy team uh, carries. Excuse me, God, I think I'm what time. Is it? It's only eight forty-six. I'm feeling kind of tired. That's a little odd. Anyway, the enemy team's carries are out farming our carries by quite a bit. Um, here, let's see. Last hits denies. You see, you can just from looking at this, you can see the top three heroes on the chart are all radiant, and they're ahead by you know about ten more. Um, and the Lich only has so many because he keeps casting his ult right next to creep waves, and it wipes out the creep wave. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, this is the part where we three v one. A Legion commander, and it takes us a solid minute to take her out. Well, not a solid minute. It took it took us way longer than it should have. Mm. Okay. Um. I'm sorry. Uh. Alright, so yeah, we just lost another tower. Alright, so that's Desolator. Um, oops, sorry, sorry, apologies. <sighs> Alright, um... One second. Okay, um, yeah. So, uh, what's going on here is the uh, TA on my team is making a pretty common mistake, uh, which is that she's she's really hoping that one that a one single big item is going to save the day and turn everything around for us. Um, which is I can sort of understand that type of thinking because it, it sort of makes sense from from one perspective. Um, because, you know, these big items are really powerful, expensive items are really powerful in Dota 2, um, but they're also expensive, and finding farm is kind of hard when you're behind. So what you need to do when you're behind is buy cost-effective items um, that, that will give you more bang for your buck. Like, rushing Desolator isn't going to save us here. Uh, she could get an urn of shadows, which would give her a bunch of a bunch of strength, which would get to her hit points and let her do um, some pure damage to opponents and, and heal herself up a little bit. She could do she could get a drum of endurance. Um, yeah, she could get a drum of endurance, which would give her a bunch of stats and make her right click a little bit more powerful, which was really useful on a hero like TA because her meld strike. Melt Strike, where is it? This one. Gives her bonus damage to her uh, to her auto attack every time she she hits something after um, after she casts it. And it's a six second cooldown. It's it's two hundred bonus damage every six seconds. That's that's actually really fast. That's that's she's doing a little over a hundred damage with her regular right click. So, that's that's double her right click every six seconds. Yeah. <sighs> so now what's happening is it's basically just the snowball effect. Um, So we take a look at the net worth graph here. Um, same story. Like the sniper is more than twice, more has more than twice my net worth. 
He's got a Desolator. He's got a Shadow Blade. He's got brown boots. Oh, these group, these builds are also greedy. Yeah, see that that happened because he just has a Shadow Blade and brown boots and a Desolator. Like he could have gotten a Mask of Madness, uh, which would give him some stats. He could have gotten a Drum, which would have given him some stats. He'd still be taking down these towers just as quickly. Well, maybe not as quickly, but he'd still be able to take down towers, but he'd also be able to survive damage better. Because um, these items, they don't... See, this just gives him damage and attack speed. Another mini stun from from Windranger. Oh, man. Uh, Desolator just gives you 50 damage and armor reduction. It doesn't give him any stats at all. So you see, he's he's fairly weak on stats. Compared to Windranger, it's about the same. See, Lich has has way more stats. He's you know he's got 80 80 intelligence. He's got 60 agility, and he's got 50 60 strength. Oh yeah. Look at all this fighting. Alright, well they got the Bane there, so that's pretty good. You know, what was I saying about Sniper? Well, now he's got lots of items. Alright. Okay, so... Alright. Um... So, that happened, Sniper bought a gem of True Sight, and he was able to see the uh, Bounty Hunter even though he was invisible, and he cast his ultimate on him, and he killed him. Um, yep, yep. So, Yeah, on the, on the Wind Ranger, these items are, are mistakes. Um, like, the Null Talisman isn't that bad, but the Orb of Venom is not great. She could have a wand, um, and she could be starting to build a... Well, for that much gold, she couldn't be... She wouldn't have the full uh, point booster. Yeah, at this point they can just sort of rotate from tower to tower and take them all, and we can't really mobilize, because they just, um... Yeah, let's see if I can get my combo off. Nope. 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 Too slow on the fingers. Oh, yeah. She would be... Uh, about a quarter, no, a little bit over a third of the way to her Aghanim Scepter, um, which is a really important item on Windrunner, or Windranger, sorry, because it, it negates the, uh, the debuff of her ultimate. Her ultimate's a little bit weird in that it gives her max attack speed, but it, it debuffs her damage. And if you get an item called an Aghanim Scepter on her, it, it sort of takes away the debuff. So that you can attack a hero or structure with maximum attack speed and almost your full damage. So you really just sort of machine gun people down super quickly. Um, yeah, um... So, that was a little greedy from the Wind wind Ranger, and that was a little greedy from the rest of us, and it's going to turn into a team wipe. Yeah, um, like, at this stage in the game it's fairly clear that the enemy team is ahead. So we should really only be looking for pickoffs when we outnumber them 
three to one or two or three to one. Like we can't take even fights at all. We can't we can't five v five. We can't four v four. We can't three v three. We can't two v two, and we can't one v one. We always have to have a numerical advantage when we try to fight them. Otherwise, we're just gonna lose. Because if we take a look at the graphs here, see like that. The way I lost the uh, the other game that we saw tonight was we my team was way ahead, and what the enemy team did was they looked for pickoffs when we were alone, when there was one or two of us out of position, and then they would take us down with three or sometimes four of the enemy team. And what's happening in this game is sort of the reverse of that, which is the enemy, t the enemy team was ahead from the start, and instead of um, coordinating and, and working together, my team just sort of split up and we're getting picked off one by one and it's letting them snowball even more. If you look at the net worth like there's nobody in my team is in the top five and the, the closest person is uh, about uh, 700 behind and he's a support hero. Um, the problem the problem with Lich late game is that all of his his damage is magical damage and these heroes are all buying items that sort of debuff magical damage in one form or another. Wraith King still has tangos from the, from the start of the, of the game. That's that's not a great sign. <clears throat> well, well, Windrunner or Wind Ranger did get her Aghanim Scepter, which is good. Looks like she sold her over Venom to do it. That's that's a fair trade. Uh, looks like we're trying to push mid, but like we kind of can't at this point. We did get a 1v1 trade there, which does favor us. Um, a little bit. Another Lich ulti on a creep wave. Like, he could get a couple of last hits, you know, with his right click. And he could show some patience, you know, right click a few creeps, take out a couple of them so that it'll bounce to more heroes than creeps but you know kind of I'm kind of starting to get a little bit salty this game about this game um, I know I did not play great here let's take a look at um, kills death assists again I'm towards the bottom which is never where you want to be I'm 1 7 and 7 um, so I'm really not playing well this game. Oh, and I just get three shot. Well, three shot and a nuke. And then one ultimate takes takes out two. And then they just get the, get the uh, get the tower and three kills. So yeah. Um. Alright, it looks like Legion Commander is building a BKB, which is which is actually smart. Like it's actually kind of safe. She could be way more aggressive and get um get a damage item of, of basically any kind. She could be going for a butterfly right now. She doesn't really need to have a BKB. The thing about the thing that the BKB does for her is it, it sort of completely negate negates Lich's ultimate, so it won't even bounce to her because if she's got her BKB turned on, because what BKB does is it blocks all magical damage. Well, that was a good one. Yep. He sort of ooh, that was actually really unlucky for for Juggernaut there, because um, um, Juggernaut's first spell here, the Blade Fury, that's the one that makes him spin. It makes him immune to magical damage, so. So he he was blade furying, and you saw the uh, the lich ulti bounced him a couple times and didn't do any damage. And the reason it didn't do any damage was because he was spinning and his blade fury was was sort of blocking the damage. Um, the bad luck for him was the way that the uh, lich ultimate bounced off of that sniper. If it hadn't if it had bounced back up to the creep wave instead of down towards the uh, the jug there, and it would not have hit him. Um, so perfectly, exactly at the end of his blade fury and killed him. 
Because that's what happened there. The, the instant that his his blade for fury ended, he got hit with that lich ult and it killed him. So it's very unlucky. And down go the middle barracks. Okay. So. Alright, so she, she. She has an orb of venom again. Alright, um. I'm gonna go quiet for a second. Okay, um, sorry, sorry to go silent and, and not, not move the camera for a couple seconds. I know you want to see all this, this hot action that's going on, but I'm, I'm very angry. Um, and the reason is that, that one of my favorite heroes in the game is being, is being played and built, built very badly. Um, um, uh, really quickly, because there's, there's, no, there's not a ton of time to talk because we're, we're literally about to lose this game. Um. This ability build is all wrong. Um, you you max power shot. Um, it, it's got a massive range. It's like huge. Like she can she can fire power shot from this part of the screen, and it'll hit stuff all the way over here. Actually, it there's nowhere she can be standing on the screen where power shot won't actually go off the screen and still be able to hit stuff. It has it has one of the longest ranges in the game. The only the only ability that I think has longer range is, is Sniper's ultimate, and it's his ultimate ability. Um, his also track stuff. It's not a skill shot, but but it's a really powerful pushing ability. It's a really powerful you know kill potential ability. It is it is by far her biggest nuke. It's a really strong spell. You don't need to max shackle shot because it it does not it it does not. Um, scale super well. It goes you know, usually you get two points in it early because going from one second to two seconds is really great. If you look down there where it says shackle duration, going from one second to two seconds is great, but going from two seconds to 2.75 seconds is not so great. So you only need two points in that. Wind run. You you don't need you don't need four points in wind run um, until you're like level 20. Um, because it, it makes you immune from magical damage at all levels, and that's the thing that you want the most. Like you get more, you get to run away for longer. But if you need all of that, you're in trouble. Um, I'm actually gonna gonna back this up a ton more, just so that I can finish. Here, I'm gonna back it up, and I'm gonna pause, 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 pause. I'm gonna pause pause the replay for a second and just just finish talking about about what's wrong with this okay um you don't need the orb of venom um the orb of venom it, it poisons people it slows people okay um the reason you don't need it is because you have shackle shot it's a stun it's it you don't need to slow people if you can completely totally stop them from running away okay um so this is, and this is a 500 gold item, which, uh, when you're this far behind, when every penny, like, every single piece of gold really counts, you, you don't need this item at all. Um, she's got two items that do the same thing, basically just give her intelligence. She could have, you know, not bought one, and, um, still have her Aghanim Scepter. Um, I don't... I don't know what's going on with this, like, I hate to harp on a single person, like, she's not the reason we lost the game. Like, it's not, it's, the person playing this hero is not, it's not their fault that we lost the game, but this is just a really bad way to build, to build Wind Ranger, and, like, it's just really frustrating to me, um, because it's one of my favorite heroes, and that's gonna be my rant for, for the night. <laughs> I usually don't rant like this, I usually don't get this salty in games, uh, but, but this one in particular, uh, I don't know, just, just really bothered me. Um, anyway,
yeah, that's the game. Um, I'm going to go ahead and close this replay. So, yeah, those were my games for the night. Uh, once again, uh, before I sign off, this is an Extra Life stream. If you guys haven't heard of Extra Life, we are a gaming charity. We raise money for children's hospitals. I personally support uh, Children's Hospital Los Angeles because that's where, where I'm from. Um, uh, if you're interested in finding out more about us, there are links on both my channel and the uh, main Extra Life uh, LA channel. Uh, either one will take you to all kinds of information about Extra Life. Uh, we've got more stuff coming up on, on both of these channels. Um, if I get home from work early enough tomorrow, I'm probably going to stream some practice. Uh, I've started sort of doing a thing where I stream my practice matches and I you know, play some of the new music that I've been listening to. Uh, it gets muted, so you kind of got to watch it live. Um, also tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night, uh, I believe Brent Sanchez will be streaming on the Extra Life LA channel. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know what he's going to be streaming. Uh, he does TF2 sometimes. He does... Uh, Brent does all kinds of stuff. He's, he's fun to watch. You guys should check him out if you haven't already. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, remember to support Extra Life. Uh, good night.